Hey friends, this is Marie of Living Felt and you have tuned in to the full version of our Wooly Wednesday broadcast where we are wet felting pretty flowers with stems and we'll also look at adding petals. So if this is your first time joining us, hit the subscribe button so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Wooly Wednesday is our live show. It happens on Facebook two o'clock Wednesdays. Just go to facebook.com slash living felt. That's where we go live. This is that full version. So I hope you'll stay tuned as we get started on this week's show. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Holly. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Marie. And we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> hey everybody, happy Wednesday. We hope you're having a beautiful spring day if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> is it winter in the Southern Hemisphere? Fall? I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let us know what it's like wherever you are. Today we are going to be wet felting flowers. But you guys have been busy. What are you up to today? What are you working on, Kayla? Uh, I'm working on the Apple Orchard Specialty Designer Pack. Oh, I love <laughs> that one. <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? I am restocking the shelves with their beautiful colors. <laughs> I've been running around the warehouse a lot today. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we are having a really great spring day. We're post workshop. We had a great workshop with Danny Ives last week, and we have a lot of great things coming up and stuff to do. But today we're going to wet flowers and wet felt flowers, and we're so glad you're here with us. So we're going to jump into it. Thanks for being here, gal. Thank you everyone for joining us and happy Wooly Wednesday wherever you are, even if you're watching on Thursday or Friday or Saturday. We are Living Felt. We are based in Central Texas. We have friends all over the world and we are grateful for every single one of you. You should see them checking in and saying hi and where they're from. So we invite you to do the same thing for everyone who's watching live. If you are watching the playback, hey, hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. Hit the bell if you are in Facebook and you'll get notified every time we go live. So this is what we do on Wednesdays is hang out with our friends for about an hour. It's different every time. Sometimes we needle felt, sometimes we wet felt, sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we just chitty chat and today we are wet felting flowers with stems. So I'm going to, uh, this is a sample of like what we're making today. We wet felted uh, simple flowers like these a couple of weeks ago that you could use for pins like a brooch or a hat pin. You could use it uh, as a napkin ring or just decor in general. And I would love to see what you're doing with yours. I know a number of our friends share theirs in our group. Our group is here on Facebook and it's just Facebook dot com slash groups slash living felt friends so you can go there and share everything you, you make we have a lovely community always willing to share tips and tricks and insights and love and gush over everything you've made so this is what we're going to make today and in just a second here we'll look at the supplies and everything you need to felt along with us i'm going to say hi to some folks um if i can find us we've got um, uh, pat and sarah in the uk and uh, Kathy in Canada. Hi gals, hi everyone, thank you for being here. Anne's gonna cue me up on my screen here so I can see you. Here's how the day goes. We're gonna have our live session together. You are welcome to chime into the conversation, ask questions. We'll do our best to ask all, answer all the questions that pertain to this week's topic. We can't get to every single question. We're on about a 20 second delay sometimes, so we don't always see your question as fast as you see it come to the screen. And if we don't get your question and it's really important, you're welcome to contact us via our website. If you go to our website, livingfelt.com, click anywhere and you'll be in the shopping cart and click the contact us page. I think we might have a link to it we can post up so we can answer your questions and you can call us. We are here six days a week, Monday through Friday, nine to four, Saturdays, 10 to four. We're happy to help you by phone if we can. And we have a real store and everything. So you can just come see us the next time you're in Austin or somewhere within driving distance. But this is what we're going to make today. So I'm going to say hi to some people. Oh, I see there's Vicki in Iowa and Linda in Canada. Hi gals. I see 
Laura, um, Danny Timboro, we have Linda, Laura Burke, Marjolene is in the UK, Patty is with us, Noemi, hi everyone, thank you for being here. And if you're new, say, hey, I'm new, and let us know it's your first time. Everybody who chimes into our conversation, your name goes into our magic bowl, and we're gonna give away some prizes at the end. So let's look at what we're making, and we're gonna look at some supplies. Y'all just keep checking in, and I'm gonna reel my magic felting cart over here. And it's probably not high enough to see, so we're gonna turn down so you can see everything I have on the table. Hands says we're ready. All right, so if you can see our colors, go ahead and give us a thumbs up or a heart or something like that. These are the colors we're working with today, and I'm going to be working with a uh, merino top. It's a lovely 19 and a half micron merino. I chose some really bright colors for today. I am going to be working with dragon fruit, which some people might think is just too too neon, but this is it's what I use to make this flower along with begonia. So you can use a color that's slightly more muted with one that's really out loud and get some super popping results. Along with these uh, for stems, some suggestions for your stems and petals. Today I used Loch Ness, Loch Ness which is a merino silk blend, one of my favorites. And I'm not working with this one today, but a suggestion is honeydew. And both of these are just gorgeous striated blends of merino top and tussa silk that is dyed instead of the bright white. And I think they make great stems. In fact, I think I used this one on the, my fairy tale pumpkin last year. So that's a fun video, uh, wet felting a fairy tale pumpkin if you're a little more intermediate or advanced. So these are the main fibers I'm working with. I'll put these back here and then this is my little uh, working tray. I have a, a couple of other colors I may work in. This is white sand which is a natural white. I want to call this peach. It might be apricot. This is citron which is kind of a neon, neonish light green yellow thing. I love it. And I also have some bling fibers. So for those of you who are not familiar with bling, Bling is usually, we call things bling that might give your piece sheen or pop or even texture. And usually they don't felt by themselves. There's something you add into the top layer or your surface design. So in this hand, I have some of our lovely dyed bamboo and we sell these in little packets. Uh, a little goes a long way so that you can try lots of colors. That's kind of what we try and do. And um, I don't know all the names, but anyway, you can shop the bamboo section. And we also have lovely dyed Tessa silk, which is just the same to work with. Um, sari silk waste, which is actually recycled saris that have been sh shredded up into this craziness and then dyed. So again, just a little bit will go a long way and mostly add texture and sheen to your surface design. That's what this stuff is. And then I'm going to be working with some neps. And neps are little bits of felted wool. Um, usually when you're carding a really fine fiber, neps are often a natural part of the carding process and it's considered a waste product. But you dye them and they become great surface design add-ons. And we sell these either in individual colors or you can also get a goodie bag too. So lots of fun stuff to add to your stash. And these are our basic fiber supplies. Now for tools, we're keeping it super simple. Um, and I'm gonna use a little bit of bubble wrap. We call this our nano bubble because you can um, use this as a resist if you want or you can use it as a surface for your more gentle projects. Uh, we have a super bubble for things that are more durable. Uh, we're gonna use our wet felting mesh and you just need a little bit. We sell it in half yard, right? Half yard, yard, two yards, five yards, whatever you need for your project. And we're gonna use our bamboo mat. Now this is bigger than a sushi mat. People often ask us about this and I'll show you mine in a minute. These are custom made for us from bamboo that is unstained, um, 
thread that is unstained, undyed, and it's really a nice quality round bamboo, not like a sushi mat, which is one smaller and two, often kind of cheap and will break apart on you. So it's a really nice mat. The bamboo is just air dried and really good work surface. And then of course, our favorite olive oil soap, and this soap is imported from France. I won't open the box, but you'll see mine. Olive oil soap is a nice vegetable content. It's nice and slick. Great lubricant, helps hold all your wet fibers together and um, really gentle on your hands and it does not suds a bunch, which is a great, great thing. And if your water is super hot, you can use a ball bross or if you have a big project, a ball bross. All of these things I'm showing you come in our wet felting tools bundle, which is a fun bundle to get and a few extra things are included in that. So if you want sort of a one click to get everything, you can do that. And hey, if you're watching this already and you don't, and you're not interested in wet felting, this is the guy we made last week, Storybook Bunny. That was a free tutorial on Wooly Wednesday. You can watch that and needle felt him. We've had lots of Storybook Bunnies posted in our group. So if the flowers don't really interest you, check out Storybook Bunny. And then if you want something even a little more um, Easter themed, we have a really fun project for wet felting Easter eggs. And Anna's gonna post a link to that PDF. And what I like about these is there's little prizes inside. So all of these things go together for great spring and Easter-y type crafts. And we hope to add to your skills today. Uh, you're gonna see that you can do a lot of things with joining things together and working with the stem. So treat today like a skills builder, and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. And Linda wants to know, is the bubble wrap that we should be using today the uh, normal bubble wrap or the thicker bubble wrap? Thin, this is the thin, normal, light, light packing style bubble wrap. That's what we're working with today. You'll see here when I pull mine out. So here's my, my work surface today, one old towel any old towel will do. I am using just a grippy shelf liner um, so that my bubble wrap doesn't slide around. And this is really thin bubble. It's the kind you could pop. Evidence. Our super bubble, you could not pop. So uh, this is just a lightweight bubble wrap. And we finally started selling it because so many people asked us to. You, it's what you can get in the packaging store as well. And we do include, I think, a three foot length in our wet felting uh, supply bundle. And you can buy it in great lengths if you want from us. So we're happy to, I'm trying to get myself centered on this camera. We're happy to um, provide longer lengths if you need. So this is my setup, a towel, the grippy, and my bubble wrap. Cool. Y'all ready to felt? Let me see some hearts if you're ready to felt. I want to hear from you. Okay. Sandra asked, could we use MC1 instead of the merino or silk today? You could use MC1. For those who don't know, MC1 is our signature batting. It's about 25 micron. But what you'll see is the layout is different and you're going to get kind of different results. When you work with the merino top and these fibers, you get these, you can get these really lacy ends, which is what I was going for, but you can absolutely use merino top for the wet felting. Just go a little bit slower if you're using uh, a finer fiber for the stem. So if you watched us last time, we made these fun flowers with beaded stamens and um, you could use these all by themselves or you could build on this lesson and do what we're doing today. So we're gonna do a quickie flower layout so that we can make our stem and if there's time, I'll show you how to add a petal to that same layout. Okay? Cool. And Anne's just gonna interrupt me with any questions at any time that you want to. Okay. Our first job is to make a stem. So you're gonna need some hot water and your soap. I'm trying to get myself set up here. And I'll put this in the corner so everybody knows what we're making. And I wanna kinda of get out of my own way. Okay, I can see. All right, for the fiber that you're gonna use for your stem, and be willing to make a practice one or two if you want, um, what I want to encourage you to do is, this is the normal thickness of the fiber as it comes when you purchase it. Do we need to change, Anne? I'm just going to zoom in a little bit sure. on the live camera. Okay. Anne's going to zoom us in here. Alrighty. 
Okay, cool, thanks. All right, so this is the normal thickness of the fiber as you buy it from us. So for at least your first ones, I wanna encourage you to divide that thick thickness in half. Just pull it roughly in half, best you can, and I'm gonna stop right about there. If you're new to separating fiber, if you go to pull it apart and it's too tight or it takes a lot of effort, your hands are just too close together. The staple lengths will overlap Usually it's only a couple of inches for a merino top, but if your hands are too close together, it won't come apart. So just pull your hands back and it should separate nicely, just like that. Now this is gonna be easy peasy way to make uh, stems and petals. So there may be other ways that you've tried and used and worked well. This is just gonna be a quick method for doing it. What we're gonna do is make our stem first and then we're gonna add it to our unfelted flower. If you want to add it to a felted flower, well then you would have to stitch it on or needle felt it on. So we're going to add ours to our unfelted flower. So the first thing we want to do is decide which end is going to be the tail and which end is going to bind with the, the flower. The end that's going to bind with the flower, we want to keep dry at all times. If it gets wet, don't sweat it. You can dry it with a towel. You just don't want to felt it. And yours could be longer or smaller depending on how big your flower is. You just want enough to get a good join there. Okay. So I'm gonna let this end be the end that connects with my flower and I'm gonna keep it dry. So on that note, I'm gonna move my water over here. And this end is gonna be my tail. So this whole end can get wet. We made snakes uh, and canes. We made canes together last year. This is just what I like to do. I like to get my fiber to be kind of round before I get it wet. Sometimes they've got folds and lumps and bumps and sometimes they're flat. Depending on where you get your fiber, they might even have braided it so it feels like it has a bit of a twist, which might be great if you are a spinner, but maybe not so great if you're a felter. So get it kind of round and condensed before you get it wet. And leave this end alone up until where you're gonna join it on your flower. So I'll go a little bit higher. I'll make this one a little bit longer. Shared. This is so cool. Oh, fun. Now, let me tell you, I've made big, long, loop de doop de necklaces like this. So this could be a bracelet. This could be a long vine. Anyone who has seen my, um, uh, what did I call it? My Nuno Felt Art Bra. This is how I made the straps for my Nuno Felt Art Bra. So this could be really long. And you can also join colors if you want. And maybe we'll do that another time and make some big, long necklace. So look, now it's nice and round and it's even a little bit uh, dense such that I could roll it in my hand. And that's what we want. If yours isn't coming together, you could sprinkle a little bit of water on your bubble wrap and that might help a little bit, but don't get it super wet until you kind of have it compressed. Because if you get it wet too soon, you get cavities and folds in it. And we just want to avoid that. Okay, so my water is fairly hot. It's not blazing hot by any means. It, you know, it could be hotter if I wanted. All I'm gonna do is swish my soap in there a little bit. Some people make a soap solution. I really don't. I'm the type of person I add a lot of soap to my hands. And when I start to make these, I'm gonna kind of add the water just like this. Now you can add, um, you could use a wire and we do have a free video that we made kind of for felting with children many moons ago. I wanna say it was 10 years ago, maybe almost 10 years ago. So you can felt over a wire. So if that's of interest to you, you might, want, you might watch that and join these two projects together. This is like working with clay, y'all. Take your time, go at it gradually. What we want is a really dense stem so that it'll kind of hold its shape and you're gonna get that gradually with by, by going gradual rather than rushing too much. Now up here where it's gonna join the flower, we want that not to be saggy and baggy. We want it to be dense and round. So once you get your piece going, it may be like working on the bubble wrap. Some people like rolling in their hands. You just don't want it to be flat. And once we get it going, that's when I like to incorporate my bamboo. Now the bamboo can kind of uh, rough things up a little bit, so definitely have your stem felted before you introduce the bamboo. 
And you don't ever have to go to the bamboo. Oh, by the way, it's just kind of an easy way. If you're making something, you know, 10 feet long, you'll be glad you had it. So here's what I like to do is I'll just take my little stem uh, and you might want to make yours only as long as your bamboo to start. And I will pull, 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 pull back while we're condensing it. You can even, since this is already going, you can even go all the way up to the dry part. As I pull back, I am pressing down. You can roll on the bamboo and you can go back and forth just like this. You'll know that you can apply it to your flower when it's feeling pretty dense. It might still bend and fold on you a little bit, but you can come back and you can work on it after you join it to your flower, no problem. Um, you just want to get it feeling as dense as you can. So add soap to your hands. Really, you're going to get a, a lot of action if you press between your hands because your strength, usually, if you have good hand strength, will be more effective even than just using the bamboo. So you want to compress out the air and get those fibers as close together as possible and that's going to give you the density to have something that's going to kind of want to hold up when you hold it up. As opposed to just slump over. Now of course you don't want your flower to be too heavy for the stem or the join so play with your ideas a little bit as you're working on them. That makes sense. Okay. We're going to join this to our flower, and I left, a, I left a whole bunch on here. I certainly didn't need to. Mine is bigger than the original one I made. So we're going to join this to our flower. Do I, we have anything I should answer before we move on, Anne? Let's see. Thanks for watching, everybody. No, we're good? We are good. Okay. So I have, what time is it? It is 2.23. Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull a little of this off because I'm going to make a small flower. We just want enough to kind of sit on the back. And we want this part right here where it's going to join the flower to be nice and dense. We want to get a really strong join. So wherever it's going to join the flower, spend a few minutes and really make that nice and compact. As I said, you can go back and do the rest, but this join is pretty important. Okay, so why don't I lay out a flower? I think I'm going to lay out the, the same one I've done here, just so you can see how I did it. And I have a little template. I think we have plenty of time to do it. My template is just a guide. You probably can barely see the circle, but my template is just a guide with a circle drawn on it. So I kind of have a guide of how to lay out that fiber. This is what we did last time, so bear with me. I'm just going to go a little bit fast. Ooh, Michelle shares, ooh, I'm picturing a few flowers with braided stems for a crown for my daughter. She's seven and would love it. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, the inspiration for me doing this flower tutorial was a crown that my girlfriends made for me. So I love it very much. Okay, so I'm laying out the hot pink. What do we call it, Anne? Dragon fruit. Dragon fruit, thank you. Who knows why I can't remember all these names. It's only about a thousand or something that we have, a thousand colors. And my hands are wet and sticky, so if your hands are wet and sticky, like mine, take a second to dry them. I'll take a sip of water, ask me a question while I let my hands dry. <laughs> yes, if you want to shape the stem, do you do it while it is wet before it dries? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll look at that. Um, we'll look at how you could maybe, you mean like give it like a curly? Is that what you mean, give it like a curly nature? Let's see, what does she mean by shape the stem? Okay, I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger than the, than the other one I made uh, because I made my stem a little bit longer too. A couple of our felting friends also want to know, could you needle felt leaves to add to the stem or, or wet felt leaves to add to the stem? You can, yeah, and if we have time I'm going to show you how to do the leaves. But what we're working on right now is just this piece, and here is one with a single, a single leaf on it. If that shows up right there, a single leaf on it. And if we have time, I will show you, at least get you to that point, because it's pretty easy. And I prep to show it to you as long as we have time. Okay. 
So this looks like a whole bunch of hot pink, I know. To tame it down, we're gonna put our more muted merino on top. And all we did was spoke it out from the center. So this is begonia. And what I'm doing with begonia is just kind of alternating it and very, very thin. I'm putting very thin little bits of begonia on there, if you can see, so that that bright pink will show kind of through without being blocked. We want the color to pop. And you may, like I said, you may not like this. You might, might want to go for more mellow flowers than mine, but I'm feeling electric spring at the moment. And Karen shares, yes, um, curling or twisting with this stem. Yep, we will gladly look at that. I'll, I'll find a knitting needle or something. Okay, so I have my flower laid out. What I'm going to do is build it up so that we get all this design, and then we're going to flip it over to join our stem to it. So let's add some bling. This is... This is our citrus bamboo top. Lots of sheen, variegated, sometimes strong, sometimes light, very pretty. I'm gonna use the more um, orangey tone. What's fun about it is you can pick, pick different bits. And when you wet felt this, it's gonna bind with the wool. You need wool for it because it doesn't felt all by itself. And it's gonna kind of clump and cluster. Um, so I want little, bits because I want the pink to show through and I am putting it really for my design here I'm kind of putting it on the pink parts and not the begonia parts that I just laid down. And Kathy asks when you're laying out the, the fiber for the flower do you make the thinness of the wisps almost see-through? Almost see-through yes almost see-through um, because I want this to be a really delicate flower and um, you, whenever you're learning to lay out fibers, it's nice to learn to create little thin layers. You would rather, like if you were laying out, um, I don't know, let's just say a placemat, something simple, it's better to have more thin layers than big, chunky, thin, thick layers. So I think flowers is a fun way to kind of practice your layout. Okay, so that's all of my uh, bamboo that I'm gonna add. Let's drop in just, let's see here. I'm just going to put in a little cluster of neps. I think on the other one I used, um, so neps are the little woolly bits. I think on the other one I used some sari silk waste. So let me work that into. I'll use some orange. Sorry, silk waste is this crazy stuff. You pretty much have to cut it to, to control it because otherwise it just wants to go everywhere. It's kind of, you know, stringy bits. So it helps to cut it. I'm just going to cluster it right on top. I'm going to drop some more neps on there. Orange, burnt orange, and yellow for like a real pop in the center of that flower. Now they're gonna kinda wanna move around, so control them a little bit. Even after you get them wet, you can kind of control them. Some people have a difficult time getting them to felt. If uh, see a mine are a little bit loose, you could needle felt them down after. They're kinda hanging in there. Or you could put little strips of fiber right over the top. And you can make those almost see-through. So just for fun, I'm gonna use this little bit of citron so it kind of I mean, I am making a tiny, tiny web. I hope, I hope that you can barely see it, the web. Okay, so this is my flower, and we want to wet felt it. I'm going to get these guys out of the way. So I'm going to use my mesh, which I have. Here it is. First, I'm going to use my mesh. I'm going to wet this so everything stays where I want, and then we're going to flip it over. So I can take this out. I don't need my shape anymore. We doing okay on time, Ann? We're doing good, it's about okay. 2.30. Okay, perfect, all right. So all I'm gonna do is wet this and add soap to this side so that everything kind of glues together. And I have a sponge on the table. Here it is. 
Okay, I like to use a sponge often to wet out. If you've wet felted with me before, it just allows me to press soap and water in and air out. So I load it with water, I load it with soap, and then I just press. And that way I control where that water goes and I don't have to put too much water on in the first place. So this is a very thin project. I'm gonna add a little soap to my hands and all I'm really gonna do for the moment is press. I'm gonna rub a tiny bit in that center where I have a big mound, but we're gonna come back to it. So don't stress about that too much. And be gentle because the sorry silk waste especially is gonna to wanna to stick to your mesh. And if, uh, Linda wants to know, how big is your flower pattern? Um, like six, smaller than a dessert plate. <laughs> <laughs> I just drew it. I'm not the, about six inches. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to do was wet this a little bit, hold your mesh so that nothing sticks to it. It's all gonna want to because it's not felted at all. So hold your mesh down. You can have, you know, two sides of mesh if you want. We're gonna flip this whole thing over. So if you're, if you're nervous about that, have two sides of mesh that are the same size or two bits of bubble wrap that are kind of the same size and then, you know, flip sandwich, flip it over. Okay, so this is an unfelted flower. What we're gonna do is join the stem we made to it. So, dry your hands a little bit. What we wanna do is open the back of this up and we wanna pull it kind of taut to where it's felted. So we wanna eliminate the space between the unfelted part and the felted part, if you will, so that we have a really strong join. If you go to place that on your flower and it feels too big, you could cut it. You could cut it right now before you lay it on your flower. You don't wanna try and take it off later. So I'm gonna leave mine the full length because I kinda like that flower coming up on the bottom. But if yours feels too big, cut it before you lay it down and get that good separation going right there. Pull all the way down if you can. And then center it on your, the back of your flower open it up, sit this part down, use your hands to press that down, and now we're gonna wet the whole thing. Shanna asks, can you pull it apart if it doesn't look good? And yes, I mean, if you don't like it, but you might have to, you know, do another stem, you know, I mean, if you start felting it. So you, you wanna make those decisions before you get too far in the felting process. So keep this gap at a minimum here. You want these two to be a nice, strong join. And now's a good time to bring your mesh or your bubble wrap back into play. You can lay your stem to one side. You get my mesh mess out of the way. Lay your stem to one side and you can kind of work around it and work under it. So first, press all of the air out. And lift this up if you need to. You can just get your um, I should probably put it back towards me. But get a good circumference so that you can work all around the stem. And now we're gonna just hand rub. You've got your bubble wrap underneath. Hold this in place so that you can kind of bind it. If you've ever worked with clay, this is gonna make sense. It's very, very similar. So be gentle and use the bubbles underneath as your co-massager. We make felt with agitation to get the fibers binding and the water and the soap help everything connect and we want gentle agitation to start if your fiber is peeling up and sticking to your mesh then you're just using too much pressure in the beginning so back off a little bit of pressure and work your way all around this we're just going to felt it from the back for a minute and join these layers which is going to happen pretty quickly now notice that I don't have a big sloggy pile of water. If you have too much water, use your towel and blot a little bit out. But mine is not so puddly that I can't find my way. If you think your fiber is sticking to your mesh, just peel it back and give a look. But you can't rush this part, so take your time and I'm gonna rub here while we see if there are any questions. 
And thanks for being here, y'all. I hope that you'll endeavor to do this. What do we got, Ann? <laughs> a lot of ideas coming up. Yeah. Fun. Let us see a round of hearts if you think you're going to make one after watching this for our live friends. We'll watch for those. And I'm going in circles as well as back and forth. And I'm not too worried about the edge. Like I'm making a lacy flower. If you want to really control the edge of your flower, you could group it back. But I like my flower to be kind of willy-nilly up there. And Wendy asks, at this stage, are you wanting to <coughs> feel the wool move over the bubbles? I know, no, I am not sliding my design. The, the design is not moving around. The design is very stationary. I can feel the bubbles but I'm not letting the design shift underneath there, not at all. Mm -mm. So I'm just pressing down, I'm pressing air and water through and out, and I'm trying to get all of these to bind. Now I've been rubbing it for, I don't know, about five minutes, and now I'm gonna start to go in circles from the outside. In a minute, we're gonna flip it over and felt from the other side. But notice that I'm moving my stem kind of back and forth while keeping it in place there so that we can get all of that to join. And we are felting the underneath side while we're rubbing through, but we're gonna give it a real good treatment here. So I think this question would be really good to address at the end, but we're getting a lot of uh, our felting friends asking about it now. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> How, how much weight can that stem really support? I have no idea. <laughs> it's gonna, if you want to put a real heavy flower on there, then go for the wire version. You know, try and do wire. But, I, you know, there's no way to say. You can make thicker stems, of course, um, and all kinds of designs by learning how to do a stem. But you're going to have to work out your, you know, your individual designs. Like, you can't have a rock in here, probably, uh, unless you work that out and build it in with the rock in place. So... You're gonna have to play with that. Okay, this is my flower. It's very under felted under here. So I'm just gonna flip it over and now I'm gonna felt from the top side, just like we did last week. And now this has been felted a little bit and I'm gonna rub, I'm pulling everything kind of to the center right now and then we'll go in circles. And like I said, I want mine to be lacy. If you want yours to be very controlled, gosh, you can use pre-felt if you want, like a pre-cut pre-felt. I'm gonna move my stem around so that it's not just in one place. This is still very delicate, but we're gonna keep playing with it. And some of my green is like sticking up off the edge. So I'm just gonna trim that off now. Right there. I had it pretty long, but I do like it. The soap is just to help your hands glide across at this point. It does act as glue and kind of hold everything together. Everything is starting to kind of hold together, but um, adding the soap to your hands is going to be like a little lubricant so that your hands don't rough up the fiber too much. Alice shares, no question here, just so appreciate that you were showing this. Oh, how fun. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so look, my flower is kind of starting to hold together, and now I am going to work with it a little bit this way. I'm going to put my thumb in the middle here, and we can felt it kind of uh, agitate it. You can see that it's kind of holding, it's kind of holding together, but it's very delicate, and you just don't want the parts to felt to each other. You can, I have a piece of plastic around here. Oh, if you want to just give it a good treatment, you can stuff a little piece of plastic or a little piece of uh, bubble wrap inside um, to kind of prevent the sides from sticking together and be a little more, a little less roughed up. And you can just squeeze and pinch and roll and squeeze and pinch and roll. We often do that over our hand, but this is another option. I think we didn't use the plastic last time. We just, you did it over our hand. So this is an option. And you can go back and forth a little bit. You can do it in your hand. Make a couple of these. If you haven't made the ones without stems, make those first so you kind of work out your uh, work out your felting if you're brand, brand new. And I like to continue felting it until you can feel that it starts to get a little dense and have a little body. 
So I'm going to roll mine in my hands a little bit. And I don't want to weaken this, this joint here, so if you can, roll the two together. How are we doing there, Anne? We're doing good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you need something around the stem so it will not felt to the flower? The stem, we want the stem to felt to the flower. I don't understand the question. We want the stem to felt to the flower. So I don't, I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding your question. I'm sure it's a good one. Um, so I'm using my bamboo now so that I can roll the whole thing. I want to make sure this is a real nice, uh, good join here at the base. I want that to be very strong. The inside uh, is doing well. If you're not sure if your piece is felted, you can pull on it, tug on it. If you're not sure if your piece is felted, you can always let it dry overnight. And I'm just going to felt mine a little bit more. Get it wet, and I'm going to felt mine a little bit more. But I'm going to felt it by scrunching it because I want my 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 um, flower to have a lot of character. Like I said, if you've um, if you want to felt with pre felt or something, you can and have more control of your flowers if you want them to be very round or very uniform. Um, and then after you roll that in your hand, you can kind of pull and even separate if you want. I just like these weird willy nilly fantasy flowers. And how I'm making this one is exactly how this one was made. So it may not be a lot of control in this flower, but you definitely get a lot of character. A couple of our southern friends want to know, do you have to use any stiffener to hold up the shape? No, you don't. You can, but you don't. Just know that if you apply any kind of stiffener, usually it's going to change the hand of your flower. You know, you, it's going to change how the fiber looks and it's going to change how it feels. You may not care how it feels, how it uh, feels, but you might care how it looks. So experiment before you spend a day making 20 flowers and then add the stuff. Uh, next week, maybe I'll bring in a butterfly. I've been adding the new uh, Mod Podge. There's a new spray on Mod Podge. What's it called? It's, it's by plaid, plaid but yeah. anyway, I've been adding it to a butterfly and I've added at least 12 rounds and it's looking pretty gangly because <laughs> I just want to see what it will do. Okay, now my stem is really wet. So if yours feels wet and it's kind of hard to roll, definitely roll it a little bit in a towel, squeeze some of that water out. You're going to want to squeeze some of the water out to dry it anyway. So play with that and what I want to tell you if you're brand new to doing this is the sheen comes when it's dry. The, the fiber, the bamboo doesn't have so much sheen or the silk doesn't have so much sheen when it's wet. So to make this I'm just going to, uh, to finish it I'm going to roll it in a towel so that there's no weight on the head. I'm going to rinse it um, in water. Rinse all the soap out. You can do a quick vinegar water soak. Vinegar helps break down the soap and helps return the fiber to its natural pH. And that generally makes it feel a little bit softer and actually brings back its own natural sheen. You can dry these hanging down if you want. Uh, if you watch our video from last week, we bind them sometimes so that they got nice folds in them. Um, and let them dry overnight with that in it. And if you want to shape your stem, let's see what I have here. I don't know how long I'm looking for. Oh, here. Yes. If you want your, sh your stem to have kind of a curly cue to it, then what you can do is wrap it around a knitting needle, a stick, or a dowel. And you might play with that shape a little bit. Uh, and you can even, this would be called blocking. So once you've rinsed all the soap and water out, once you've done your vinegar rinse, get all the water out again so that it's moist, damp, but not dripping wet, and then shape it. And what you can do is scrunch it tighter than you want it, because when you take it off of whatever block, it's going to have a little less of that character. And you can bind it with rubber bands or something that won't flatten it. That would be the only thing to pay attention to is that it doesn't get flattened. And then when you take it off tomorrow, it will still have some of that character to it because the wool has a real nice memory. So you can play with that uh, as an idea. And we probably have time for me at least to show you. I'm going to just uh, show you real quick how to add a petal uh, to your stem or two 
And um, so this is just going to be a quick sort of suggestive guide of how to add the petals. A petal. A leaf. Sorry. I call things by their wrong names. <laughs> I just make up my own. <laughs> my own. And we got some clarification on the... Um, <clears throat> on a question that Leslie asked a little bit ago. Uh -huh. So she was asking, do you need to put something between the stem and the flower so it doesn't felt? It's when the project is all under the mesh, do you need to worry about part of the stem felting to the flower that's not supposed to? No, we were able to move it. So when, so Leslie's asking, when we're doing this part where we're first joining it, do we need to worry when it's laying down? So if you'll notice, like look back on that part of the video, I had the mesh going all the way around and this was almost laying on the mesh. But even so, if this is laying directly on your flower, when you're, when you've got the mesh on top and there's no mesh underneath here, just don't rub underneath there and move this before you rub on that side. But notice that join, that's kind of what you want. You want this uh, to be able to, the stem to be able to hold up that flower. So to make a petal, I'm gonna just quickly show you what I did. Um, because it's so fast, so fast, so fast. And anyone else ask questions, I'm just gonna demonstrate this real quick. Um, this takes a little time if you want to pre-make your leaf. You could make it rectangular and then cut it, cut out your shape. I just made mine by shaping the wool with like no effort, <laughs> no real thought whatsoever. I just kind of went like this to, sh to make the leaf, move everybody out of the way. Um, pull this out so you have a little bit of length. And you can make yours as big or as little as you want and yours can have a little bit of a join or not a join, but here's all I did. A little mesh, a little water and soap. We won't have time to felt the leaf. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to go about it. So shape your leaf while it's wet. Oh, sorry, well, I blew that, but it's okay. A leaf can have character, oh, by the way. A leaf can definitely have character to it. I'm, I usually would do this on my dry, I have to start over. Okay, let's look at how to do the petal. My whole uh, space is wet, so that's kind of causing a problem. You need to have a dry space to do it. So shape your leaf how you want it. And you know, you could give yours more uh, cross hashing. I didn't give mine any cross hashing at all. Um, I'm going to wet this. I'm gonna run out of time real fast here. We still have 10 minutes. For <laughs> we got 10 minutes, we got 10 minutes. Okay, this is all I did to shape my leaf. I pulled out the fibers and I grouped them like this. Leave this end dry. Shape your leaf, felt it, felt it, roll it, roll it. I mean, this leaf took more effort than what I just did for you uh, because the fibers are all going the same direction, but you can do it and you can get a pretty cool looking effect. You can be as detailed or non-detailed on your leaf as you want. So once you get it like this, keep your mesh on there and felt it gently from all directions on both sides, including rolling it, um, unrolling it, rolling the sides, unrolling it. You can roll it in your bamboo, which I did. Just felt it so that it's really holding together and leave this end dry. So I'm gonna get this out of here. Now, when you come to make your stem, you wanna get it dense just like we had it. But before you go too far, put this guy on there where you think you want him. Maybe you want it to go up. So I'm gonna join him. And what you see is that these uh, don't go too far with that rolling. You just kinda wanna get it in to be part of the program. What you can do is take that little piece of plastic I had and depending on how felted your leaf is, you definitely don't want it to felt to this part. So put that piece of plastic just right under the leaf so it doesn't felt to that. Now for here, it can help to have a join going around this way. Tiny bits. If you feel like you're messing up your striations, then you can just add some more over the top, but I like to kind of go around it. So I'm gonna add some wool going around, and that's gonna help bind it on there. 
So you're gonna have to go a little more gentle if you have that leaf on there or multiple leaves, but this is just a quick way to do it. And then continue felting your stem the way you already did. Mine is not, you're gonna have to add a little water to keep it all together. And soap, and take your time. So keep, let your plastic be your binder, I mean your protector so that it doesn't felt to your stem, but add your petals in. So you have to make your leaf first, sorry, make your leaf first and then make your stem. And you're just gonna have to control it while you work. But that's how I made this one to join to the flower. And I hope that's helpful. This is what you want, wispy things. So that's our super quick wet felting flowers on a stem tutorial for today. And you can add your beaded stamens if you want, like last time. There's so many things you can, you can do with it um, and so many different ways you can decorate them. So you can watch this tutorial for how we did this um, bamboo trim and how we did the uh, stamens. And you can incorporate both of those tutorials together, even add the leaves to get some really pretty fancy flowers or even get some shapes. So I'll try and post that one later. That's all I got. We do have um, one question that I, I think would be a good one. A couple of our felting friends wanted to know if they wanted to make flowers like roses or, or something with multiple petals. Would you make the petals individually or, or use a different format? It's a great question. So we, um, why don't we turn up the camera so we can answer that a little bit. I think we don't have the flower here that I'm thinking about. But we're going to go ahead and turn up the, question, the cameras and I'm going to answer that question. Make. The question was if you want to make a flower that is very defined. Maybe it's a tulip, maybe it's a rose. We've done a poinsettia also. Would you make the individual petals first? And my answer would be yes, or I would make sets of flowers. We have a wet felting poinsettia kit where we show you how to do something super easy, which is make a flat sheet of felt, cut out the petals, re-wet felt those and then needle felt the whole thing together with a little bit of sewing for embellishment um, and that's a fun project but you could also make sets of flowers like if you're going to do um, an orchid an orchid could have you know three petals that are kind of offset like a propeller and you can i would tend to make those flat to start and cut them out so you see your sizes but wet felt them after you cut them and you're going to give your petals really nice character and then you can sew them you can sew them together we did a tutorial for wet felting flowers last year where we did peonies isn't that right we did peonies and that is on youtube and it is it's wet felting flowers one it's really different so what we did is we wet felted strips we cut those strips and then we twisted them all together and we made some simple little I don't know, I want to call it like a button rose. I don't know what it is called. But we made some simple little rose-ish styles with the same way with wrapping those cut felt pieces. So there's lots of ways to do it. You can sew your petals together. You can needle felt them together. You can make each individual petal or you can make strips of um, petals uh, like that. So check out that tutorial and sharing that tutorial from last year. It's just a different way to do it. That tutorial was shared with us by a member of our community, Mary Beth Colton, super talented lady. And she is the one who inspired that tutorial and um, she let us share it. So super fun. And thank you for joining us today on this. I hope that if you do felt flowers, we'll get to see them. And I know these hours go super quick. The fairies are gonna are clustering. They're gonna come back to give away prizes. Let me tell you about the next couple of weeks. So this uh, week, will somebody grab uh, Manny up front? At the end of this month, my dear friend Charity Vandermeer is coming back to teach a nano felt workshop. We are going to be wet felting coats and this lovely coat right here was felted by Charity and it's now in my ownership. <laughs> it is so lovely and fun and nano felting is just awesome and you can do so many things with it. So she's coming back along with our uh, more of our friends. We're going to be wet felting coats but for the next two weeks what we would like to do is a little uh, nano felting tutorial. So next week we are going to look at a variety of nano felt pieces. We're going to define nano felt. We're going to look at some different examples of nano felt. And my challenge to you is to find some, fi some fabrics 
to felt with your fine fibers because two weeks from now we will do some nano felt samplers nothing in particular it doesn't have to become anything specific but we want to get you felting your fibers to the fabric so that you can experiment with the outcomes and effects and what it looks like. So if that's of interest to you, I hope you'll give us a heart and I hope you'll tune in next week. We'll talk about nano felting on the week after that. We'll actually nano felt some samples together. Cool. Okay. So the fairies are back. We're going to give away some prizes. Thank you all for joining us today. Were you guys just in there felting flowers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Like yeah. Okay, Dreaming of felting flowers. We all like to cram in here because everyone likes to give away prizes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Holly, you want to go first? Severa? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a V. Sorry. Severa <laughs> Hudson. Severa Hudson. Yay! Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen her new a few times recently. And what's our prizes today? So prize number one is our wet felting of flower kit. And you'll get merino tops with that along with some embellishment fibers. You'll need the mesh and the soap or whatever you can pull together for that, but you'll get fun fibers to wet felt your own flowers. And this is a different process than we use today. So you can use today's tutorial along with the instructions. Okay, and what else, what else can they choose from? <laughs> the second prize is an embellishment fiber pack. It's going to have a goodie bag of the wool nets, mm -hmm. a package of the sari silk waist, and then a package of the bamboo top for some fun sheen. <laughs> yeah, so if you already have merino top or fibers you want to felt that, you could choose that one. And all you have to do is email us uh, at customer service at livingfelt.com or give us a call and let us know which prize you want. But we're going to draw two more names. Uh, Kayla? Oops, there's a couple trying to hide in there. <laughs> Crystal Huts. 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 <laughs> Yay, Crystal! One more name, one more name. Oh, here. <laughs> and number three is Kelly Burton. Yay! <laughs> Thank you everyone for felting with us today. We hope you've had fun. We hope you'll make some flowers and share them with us so we can see. Y'all have a great week. Bye. Thank you.